What's going on guys? I'm coming at you from isolation in the UK. I think this is day 26 for me. And yes, I'm getting stir crazy and wishing I could get out and shoot some photography. And I have an idea that tomorrow, which will be a video coming on Sunday, I'm gonna sit in our little garden here in the UK for the whole day and take photos. The entire day I'm gonna sit out there and see what I can come up with. It might work, it might not. But today's video, I wanna talk about a product. I wanna talk about the Nisi Switch. It's the filter holder system you didn't know you needed. It is this one. It is really cool. And I'll explain it in a split second. First, my online photography gallery is finally open. I've been trying to open this gallery of photos with prints for sale for like three years, but I just haven't had the time to do it. Of course, these past couple days, we've all, I think, had a lot of time. I have set up my portfolio with prints for sale. And the coolest part is I've actually uh, included some from you guys. Every single month I have a, a featured photographer from the photography community in my gallery. And that's not like, you know, famous photographers that I'm friends with, it's you guys, it's the community. So if you wanna check out the gallery or if you wanna find out how you can potentially have your images featured in my gallery, head over to my website. There's a link in the description to see all about that photography gallery. <laughs> whew, whew. I, I just haven't been on video a lot lately, so I'm kind of like, almost a little bit flustered, like a little bit panicky. So I'm gonna try to tone it down. Okay, today's video is about the Nisi Switch, which as I mentioned, is the filter system that you didn't know you needed or wanted. It's awesome. And to explain how it works, I'm gonna show you the traditional system. So this is the Nisi uh, V6. It's awesome as well. The Nisi V6 connects to an adapter ring that you put on the front of your lens, and then you just take this and you snap it on you make sure it's locked in and you snap it on and then it's on then if you're a grad filter user like i am you can slide your grad filter into there and then you you know can work that around to however you want if you're getting crazy and you want to use a second grad filter you can do that as well so you just slide that right into there but no matter what when you're using a grad filter system wow those are really dirty i should really clean those when you're using a grad filter system, you really have to manipulate the gradient line together between the two filters. The Nisi switch fixes that or solves that. It's one of the few products I've seen that I went, ah, that's really clever. So let me show you how it works. The switch goes onto the same system as the V6. So the same adapters. So you just pop that onto the adapter ring and you've got it there. And then you take your filter, your gradient filter, the same as you would have with your, um, your regular system. You slide it in. And then if you want a second gradient filter, you can go like this and you guide that in and then check this out. <laughs> How cool is that? You can actually split the, gra the grads so that they go in different directions like blocking out light in different areas. It's a totally, it's totally a game changer. In situations where you might be like photographing a mountain, for example, you might have, you know, the mountain like this. And if you have the grad filter straight across, it blocks out the light from hitting the mountain. If you use this system, you can manipulate it like that, a V, so that you get the light coming out of the sky and the sky, but then the light on the mountain or the foreground and midground is still there. Or if you got a cliff, for example, you can go like this, block out the light on the top of the cliff and the side of the cliff, and it's totally awesome. I just think it's such a clever system. It's the system I didn't realize I wanted until I saw it, and then I went, Phew. That is genius. So on today's episode, the rest of the way, I wanna actually take you guys out in the field and show you a couple situations where I used the Nisi in the past and talk about the images. The first of these situations comes from Nepal where we were on the Annapurna circuit. This was actually, I think, the first morning on the Annapurna circuit. So let's jump back in time. We've got really heavy backlight here in this scene. We've got this peak like this and a really dark foreground. So what I've done here is I almost kick over my camera is I've got a two stop medium grad in holding in just the top of the frame. 
but then there's like the whole diagonal here that's way brighter than everything else so I've got a four stop at another angle cutting across and totally evening out the light and it actually kind of saves the day so already first photo tested with the switch and it's paying dividends So now let me show you the images. There's actually two different ones that I shot here. This is kind of the, the fully exposed image. It kind of came out pretty cool. This is what it looked like before filters though. And as you can see, the sky is totally blown out. In fact, you can't even see the mountains because they're totally blown out. So what I did is I actually used a two filter setup. I used one filter to go straight across the hillside and then one on top of that to cut out the light above the mountain. And actually, I'm gonna show you a Photoshop thingy I made that shows, you know, the transparent gradients using a red filter that I made. And then the black lines are kind of where the gradient line was. So all that red area is area I was able to kind of darken using the Nisi switch setup. And here again on the second image, it's almost exactly the same. I have uh, the before image, where the light is just totally blown out on the top. And then a second image where I use the two gradient filters, one on the hillside and one on the mountains to really, really capture all the dynamic range. There wasn't really good light that, th that morning, so the switch kind of saved things. Now the second situation was also in Nepal on the Annapurna circuit. It was like, I guess, four or five days up the trail. I'm gonna jump you back in time again. We're on day four of the Annapurna circuit and I just found the ideal spot for the switch. I have been packing both systems around with me on the trek because sometimes you kind of just want three filters. And the one thing about the switch is you can only use two. So here it was the perfect situation because you can see the light behind me. Really bright up here at this angle and then really bright down here at this angle with this being dark. So by putting the switch in with a grad filter like that and a grad filter like that, it got the perfect exposure. It made for a really, really nice image. Again, I'm gonna show you the before without any filters. And then the after with the filters. Just kind of perfects the image. And this situation was actually the perfect, the perfect test subject for the Nisi switch. It's an image that I think probably would have worked without filters, but is definitely made like 10 times better with the filters. Uh, I use the switch a lot in Nepal. Basically it was my filter system in Nepal because with mountains and valleys and stuff like that, you always have weird horizons that you're working around. After Nepal, I wasn't in the mountains at all. I wasn't even in like landscapes that were complicated at all. I think I shot one time on the cliffs in the UK with the switch and then I was in Ecuador shooting wildlife so I wasn't using the switch. And then I got to Oregon and I got to this really beautiful scene and I was really struggling with the light and the switch saved me again. To make this photo, I'm doing something different because I've got a whole different filter system on. I've got the Nisi switch, and it's all kind of all kinds of awesome in situations like this, where you have a really powerful bright sky, a really powerful bright foreground, and then a bunch of dark so dark stuff off to the side. It allows you to capture all that dynamic range. So I'm playing around with this, and I really like this. There's really beautiful color. There's some nice drama in the sea here. This photo was kind of like the perfect situation for it. Without the filters, you can see that everything was overexposed. Then after this image, I popped on the filter system and I set up the filters. In fact, let me show you the Photoshop of how I set up the filters in kind of a way that left that mid ground catching light, but the backlit sky was getting filtered and the kind of like side bottom light was getting filtered as well. 
leaving the shadowed part of the sea still unfiltered. And then this is the final exposure. As you can see, it's a massive, massive difference from the original. Now, I know that some people are gonna come at me and say, Brandon, you don't need filters to do this. You can do this by blending, maybe even in Lightroom, using gradient filters in Lightroom. And yes, I know. And you're right. But there are three reasons why I use filters and it doesn't make them right. It's just the reasons that I have. There's no right or wrong way to do photography in my opinion. The first reason is that I have a hard time visualizing how a photo is gonna turn out in post-processing. I need to see it being made in camera for me to get excited about it or for me to start like expanding the composition. So if I'm not using filters in the field and I can't see what it's doing to the light, I have a hard time imagining how it's gonna look in the future. The second big reason is that I'm always scared about artifacting and I'm always scared about noise. So if I was to take my images into Lightroom and blend them together, I'm always worried that I'm gonna mess something up. I'd much rather get it right in the camera and know I had it right in the camera rather than have to f having to fiddle with a bunch of levers and things on Lightroom to try to fix an image. I'd rather just have it right in camera. And the third thing is when you blend images or when you, you know, create the filtered effect in Lightroom, you tend to end up with faster exposures. For example, if you're blending and you're taking a photo of the foreground and you're taking a photo of the sky, the sky is going to be a faster shutter speed and you might not get that movement in the sky that you might want. The same thing can happen with water. So using just Lightroom filters and dragging and sliders and stuff like that in Lightroom, I took the before photo from Oregon and I made it again. So you can see this is the edited version of the before image from Oregon. It's just totally, totally all done in Lightroom using gradient filters in Lightroom, digital gradient filters and pulling out, you know, uh, highlights and shadows and stuff like that. As you can see, it works. But if I put it next to the image that I made using the filters, you can see that there's a couple things that are different. And the first is the water. The water is definitely a slower exposure. It has more drama, 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 drama. And I know maybe it's just all in my head, but I feel like the image that I made using the Lightroom and the digital filters has a faker feel to it. And that might just be in my head. It might be personal preference, but that's just kind of how I feel. Now, one way you can always tell if you actually want to use a product or if you need a product or if you really like a product is to use it and then stop using it and then find out if you're missing it. And I definitely find that I'm missing the Nisi switch when I don't have it with me. I was out shooting in Iceland at this cliff and I'd left the switch in my suitcase and I was just like, oh, I wish I had the switch. This would be the perfect situation for it. Switch would be perfect here. If I had the switch in that situation, I wouldn't have ended up with kind of these little patchy problems I had because I put my filters in sideways on this image. And so I was missing the switch there on that shoot and I've missed the switch every single time I haven't taken it out. So one of the situations I haven't been using it is when I wanna use an ND and two grad filters cause you can't do that on the switch. You can only do like two filters. But overall, I don't think now that I know the switch exists, I could live without it. I've basically just been traveling around with two filter systems in my bag because it's really not that much more. And the switch comes in handy enough that it's worth carrying the two in my bag. I mean, you have two like this, it's really not that much uh, of a difference. So yes, I love the switch. I think it's such a cool product. I love brands that innovate. I absolutely love brands that don't just try to, you know, make something a little bit better than before. I love brands that try totally new things. And that's one of the reasons that I accepted the ambassadorship with uh, Nisi Filters. And on that note, you do need to know that this video is sponsored by Nisi. So a massive shout out to Nisi for sponsoring the video and creating such cool products. And that's it for today's video. Be sure to check out um, Nisi. All my camera gear is in another link below in the description. And be sure to check out my photography gallery if you got the time as well. And uh, I will see you on Sunday on a video in which I mentioned that I'll be sitting in the garden all day trying to make a photo. I'll see you there. Peace.